Hello, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. I'm your host, Mike Vieira, and today I would like to talk to you about 10 awesome surround live mixes. So I was brainstorming recently about what the next video ought to be and I saw a video on one of my favorite YouTube channels, Classic Album Reviews. Barry does a great job with that channel, so I encourage you to check him out, where he did a top 10 live albums and in the rock and hard rock genres. And not only did I notice that the vast majority of the artists that he covered do have surround albums that you can check out, like I think 8 out of 10. But also some of the exact albums that he talked about have a surround counterpart. So it really got me thinking, you know, I haven't covered on this channel very often that there are some outstanding, excellent surround live mixes to be enjoyed. So I want to give just um, some guidelines on how I chose uh, the titles that you're going to hear about. We're all familiar with your standard live mix. Even in 5.1, 7.1, normally it's the band up front and the surrounds are used to place you in the venue. So you're going to have some reverb from the band and a bunch of crowd noise primarily in your surrounds. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of concert videos that are like that. And like I said, it does place you there at the venue and that's fine. And it's how the vast majority of live DVDs and Blu-rays are mixed. It is the exception when the engineer pulls actual musical content out into the surrounds and either puts you on the stage or um, maybe recreates the kind of experience that Pink Floyd and other bands have set up live where they actually have monitors behind the audience and they're able to create a quadraphonic effect with parts of the show. So let's jump in. I'm going to give you 10 awesome live surround experiences. These are not all albums per se, some of them are live videos, but the only difference between the two is that you can shut the monitor off on the video and you have a live album, right? So I didn't want to restrict myself to just audio only releases. So coming in at number 10, I've tried to rank these, um, but really they're all worth checking out. We have Rush. Snakes and Arrows Live. Not only is this a set where they decided to pull out a bunch of gems from their vault, such as Digital Man, Entree New, Circumstances, and then plenty of good songs from the Snakes and Arrows Tour, Armor and Sword, uh, Far Cry. The standout feature of this mix to me is when you get Neil Peart's drum solo and Richard Chaiky and Alex Lifeson actually pulled elements of the drum kit out around you. I don't think it feels exactly like you're sitting on the drum throne, but they at least got creative and a little bit adventurous with the surrounds, especially during Peart's electronic waltzy part, if you know what I'm referring to that especially begins to like use all of the room and um, it really is a standout moment. Now the mix throughout the rest of the show mainly has Getty's bass and keyboards up front, Neil spread out along the stereo spectrum up front, and then Alex's guitars pulled out into the room. So it does provide some separation for Alex from the rest of the band and just helps the music to breathe, I feel. So, Snakes and Arrows Live, very cool live surround mix. Next we have 
Fleetwood Max, The Dance. This is an Elliott Shiner mix, and it's just a phenomenal set list and a great performance from the band. Unfortunately, it is on DVD with um, a lossy surround codec, and it also features like video from that era. Even still, it's extremely enjoyable. It sounds really, really good. I wish they would uh, re-release it on Blu-ray so that we could get the audio lossless, which um, at least one band has done recently. Thank you, Porcupine Tree. They did that with Arriving Somewhere. Um, but it's great nonetheless. Um, I do enjoy, you know, legacy products. Uh, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. It's not going to be the absolute greatest it could be video or audio wise, but it still makes this list. All right, and in um, a similar fashion, we have Eagles, Hell Freezes Over, another Elliot Shiner mix. And um, Elliot Shiner really was the first engineer that I was aware of to really make significant use of surrounds with live mixes. Uh, the band is all around you, every song, especially the bonus song, um, Seven Bridges Road. It's actually a studio cut, but it's super, super, super discreet with one eagle singing out of each channel. And it's just jaw-dropping, like, get this concert just for that bonus track. But the, the concert is mixed superbly super, super discreet, um, a lot of percussive and supportive elements in the surrounds, and then the main elements, I would say, favor the front, that's sort of Elliot Shiner's signature, and I think it works super well. All right, so now we get to 10, 9, 8, 7 on my list. We have Miles Davis, Live Evil. The reason why this isn't um, closer to the top of my ranking is that it is um, very challenging musically. It is Miles Davis getting extremely experimental. This is a far, far departure from his kind of blue type of material. He has John McLaughlin in the band. Um, these guys are really, really, really pushing the envelope for just accessibility and really stretching out, being very improvisational. Um, if I understand correctly, half of these cuts were recorded like purely live, and then the other half were possibly uh, more of a studio setting, but there's at least two different venues going on, which is spelled out in the liner notes. This is fairly raw. So there are like some moments where you can hear like a tremendous amount of feedback and hum coming from McLaughlin's guitar amplifiers, for instance. So um, if you want to hear like super, super crazy Miles Davis, um, extremely hard panned quad with a bunch of ping pong effects, go for Bitches Brew first. And if you love that, then Live Evil is very much a companion to that. It does have a crazy quadraphonic mix with some ping-ponging uh, Miles Davis trumpet like up ahead of you sometimes, then all of a sudden it's behind you, and moments such as that. It's just not quite got the fidelity that Bitches Brew does, and I would say it's even like more of a challenge musically. But Live Evil, I'm so glad that it came out on Super Audio CD before it did recently. You could only get it on LP, and then that requires a lot of legacy equipment to purchase, which is expensive, to maintain, to calibrate, to fuss with, and instead you can just pop an SACD in a vast variety of different kinds of players. SACD players, some DVD players can handle SACD, Blu-ray players, a lot of them can. And so it just has made this album available to way more people. All right, so uh, moving forward, we have Catatonia, The Great Cold Distance, uh, comes in this 10th anniversary deluxe set. I just had um, a friend reach out to me recently asking if I had this and um, getting some advice on how to 
be able to listen to a copy. And one thing to note is that uh, defective DVD audio came with the original set and I emailed the record company and got a replacement disc. The problem with the DVD audio was the live bonus concert um, only had one of the surround channels and I don't remember if the other one was silent or if it was just replicated but what they did on the replacement DVD audio is you get the true bonus live mix with the band playing the entire Great Cold Distance album up in front of you and an accompanying symphony orchestra in the surrounds behind you. Uh, so the mix that has made this list is that live bonus album that comes on the DVD audio. Not only do you get a re-remix of Great Cold Distance in 5.1, a second attempt at remixing the album proper, because the first attempt 10 years previous was not good. It was way out of balance. It didn't have the power of the stereo album. This re-remix is incredible. I love it. And the live bonus concert is just as satisfying. So Catatonia, Great Cold Distance, 10th anniversary. All right. I have wanted to mention this particular title for quite a long time. This is a very deserving band, a very deserving title. Unfortunately, I think it's out of print at this time, and um, people have done some desperate things to try to get a copy. This is Big Big Train, Stone and Steel. And I may not do the band an incredible amount of justice. I'm not a Big Big Train historian but I'll give it my best shot. Um, you have early Genesis, and then I feel like the band that best took the mantle from them was Marillion for a while, and then I feel like Big Big Train has now, in this contemporary time, taken the mantle from early Genesis. They do also have their own distinctive styling going on, but I feel they pay heavy homage to early Genesis. And if I remember correctly, this was recorded at Peter Gabriel's Real World Studios. So there's a connection there. It is a very worthwhile connection, in my opinion. Um, I love this concert. The way that it was mixed actually inspired how I chose to do a lot of my Disturbing the Universe album. And again, um, these guys are taking a page out of Elliot Shiner's playbook where you have main elements up front and supportive elements um, coming out into the room around you. And I just think that is a super effective way to mix surround albums, including live albums. So hopefully they reissue this thing because um, a lot of people really, 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 really want it. And um, Big Big Train also have a new offering out. I just haven't had a chance to check it out. But this is amazing. It's amazing. All right, we're getting um, close to the top of my choices for today. We have Pink Floyd, The Delicate Sound of Thunder. Unfortunately, it only comes in that big box. I'm sorry about that. I hope they get around to splitting up the box and releasing smaller packages like they did with the earlier set. But, this has been re-edited from the original 35mm films and is also remixed recently by Andy Jackson and it is the crown jewel of the later years box. It is just fantastic. Um, in fact, I might put this on again today just because um, it's so enjoyable. And uh, there are other very worthy features of the later years box set, but in my opinion, like nothing comes close to how pleased I was with the delicate sound of thunder. It's also just um, a great album, a live album in its own right. Uh, it's been around for many, many years. Um, I think enough people out there can vouch for the performances. And this just takes an already great live album and elevates it up just 
into the stratosphere. So Barry, if you're watching, I heard you say that Pink Floyd is probably your favorite band of all time. This is nuts. Very, very, very worth tracking down. Um, speaking of another great live album in its own right, and one that was mentioned in Barry's recent video on Classic Album Review, the Almond Brothers Live at Fillmore East. This has several different varieties that you can try to track down. This DTS CD has the original quad mix with a synthesized center channel, meaning it was derived from the fronts probably, and then a synthesized LFE. It was probably just derived with a high pass filter. So it really is quad in feel. It has um, a center channel and a 0.1 channel, just nominally. Uh, this is just absolutely amazing. You have the drums up front, the bass up front, main vocal up front, dueling guitars on either side of you in the surrounds, and the keys can either be up front or can occupy one or other surround, depending on what the song needed at the time. This is a crazy panned quad mix. It's not ambient. It is highly discreet. You are in the middle of the band while they perform this iconic show. Now, it was originally released as a two disc set, two DTS CDs. Um, I happened to get the one DTS CD version Somehow they figured out how to get all seven tracks on one disc, probably for cost-saving measures. And um, my tray back still has information for two discs. And so this was like the second version, I guess. And because some people have the one disc version and the tray describes just one disc. Now that covers the DTS CD, which is, like I said, derived from the original quad. and. Later on, uh, an SACD version was put out, and um, people that I trust vouch that it has amazing fidelity and it's a great experience, but they tamed the surround mix. It was remixed, and that surround mix is way more tame. Band up front, venue around you. So just be aware of that. If you want to track it down for the fidelity, um, do it. And then also a three Blu-ray set came out pretty recently, and again, um, Fidelity awesome, performance is awesome, and the mix is pretty conservative. Okay, so if you want the surround wow factor, go for this DTS CD. All right, we're getting close to the top. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Stephen Wilson and or Porcupine Tree, so I chose Anesthetize because Fear of a Blank Planet is my favorite Porcupine Tree album, and this Blu-ray honors that tour. And Stephen Wilson takes a page out of Elliot Shiner's playbook as well. It is a highly discreet mix. You mainly have the main rock and metal components, drums, guitars, vocals up ahead of you, bass, centered up ahead of you, and then surrounding elements are going to be more supportive. But this is totally, totally worthwhile simply from a surround perspective. And then you have a great performance and, um, in my opinion, a fantastic set list. Uh, I'm not sure that Stephen Wilson or Porcupine Tree get any better than this for me. Um, now, a lot of Stephen Wilson's other works, including his solo live stuff and some other Porcupine Tree live offerings, um, could definitely make a video such as this, and I think I should just do another live mix video sometime, uh, because I could have picked probably half a dozen works from Stephen Wilson. Porcupine Tree, Anesthetize, just amazing. Um, it's a must. All right. That brings us to our number one. Our number one. This could be the greatest surround value ever put out on the face of the earth. 
and I don't think it's a band that I've mentioned yet, and I have needed to correct that. So here we go. We have The Pineapple Thief, the brainchild of Bruce Sword. Uh, they recently picked up Gavin Harrison, which is just a huge bonus for me. I love his drumming. I love his style. Not only do you get where we stood, the concert, with two different mixes, and the liner notes describe a natural mix approach and then a discreet mix. Guess which one I like the best. Um, you also get a bonus album. Um, I think it's called Your Wilderness. And then you get also a bonus EP, and then also a, like a bonus acoustic set. All of them are mixed in surround, and all of the mixes are just extremely effective, very well done. This is probably the greatest value in surround ever put out. Uh, yeah, so you get the main show, option one, with uh, documentary chapters, or the full show without the documentary. You get the main show audio options of LPCM Stereo, DTS HD Master 5.1 Natural, or DTS HD Master 5.1 Discrete. You get the Where We Stood documentary broken out, and you get the Making of an Exile, Tear You Up Acoustic, in Exile promo, No Man's Land lyric video, and you get Your Wilderness in 5.1, Eight Years Later in 5.1, and an acoustic set. And I guess that acoustic set is just in stereo, possibly. But um, anyway, I was just floored by the amount of content, the value that Bruce and his company um, packed into this. It didn't come with any mastering errors or any issues. Um, unfortunately, surround releases seem to be plagued quite often by um, glitches and mastering errors. Uh, this is just absolutely, absolutely, absolutely a must. Um, I enjoy the performances. I feel like uh, The Pineapple Thief comes alive. Uh, no pun intended, a uh, little better energy in the live set than on um, some of the studio albums of theirs that I've given a shot. So um, I recommend starting with the concert. Uh, if you want my pick, go for the discrete version, and then go ahead and check out um, Your Wilderness and Eight Years Later as well. They're just a little bit more mellow, and so I like the energy of the show. Uh, so that has been 10 really, really, really cool uh, live surround mixes, some audio-only albums, and then also some concerts, uh, some concert videos. And uh, I want to hear from you what your favorite live surround mixes are. Uh, I could have done three or four of these videos. It was really hard for me to choose just 10. But I wanted to get 10 recommendations out there for you. And again, I'd like to hear um, what you feel I missed. And um, I may have been thinking about the same album, and it could make it into a later video. Or you may have a suggestion that I just haven't come across yet. I'd appreciate it either way. Uh, don't forget to like this video, share this video if you feel like it, uh, subscribe, ring the notification bell if you are new to the channel, and um, Go check out uh, Life & Surround t-shirts on eBay from the Lee Baggins store. Um, that does help support the channel. And yeah, just uh, continue to enjoy Surround music and share it with me and others who love it as well. That's what this channel is all about. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, remember to live life in Surround.